People. <laughs> people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. Now, I thought about simply quoting Barbra Streisand lyrics for the entire five minutes, but at the insistence of my wife, quickly changed my, you know, changed my mind. Um, I did say wife. Uh, we've been happily married for 23 years. <laughs> we have a son who's a senior in high school. By the way, he's grateful he's away at a golf tournament in Flagstaff tonight. Um, <laughs> but if you can't tell from the slides or you can't tell from you know, the, the, the program, I adore Barbara. Now, if you're over 40, you probably know Barbara as the Tony, Emmy, Grammy, and Oscar-winning singer and actress. If this is you, let me see your hands. A little noise. There you go. Good. If you're under 40, you know her as the crazy sex therapist mom of Ben Stiller and Meet the Fockers. Is that you? Okay, good. Now look, I like all kinds of music. I've, you know, I've seen Aerosmith, Sum 41, and, and Garth Brooks three times in concert. My son will once again be happy he's not here when I tell you that I took him to see NSYNC at the age of six. So I'm all over the musical map, but, but Barbara is different. All right, maybe I'm different, you know. I, all my longtime friends that know of my undying devotion to Barbara just think I'm a goofball. And I'm used to being alone on this. In fact, not one single male friend or acquaintance shares even the tiniest bit of my passion for Barbara. <laughs> That's all right. I don't mind. <laughs> you know, my devotion is never-ending. And knowing that musical taste is subjective, I still say Barbara Streisand is the greatest female singer of all time. Now, it started for me when I was 16. It's 1977 at my aunt's house going through her albums, and I found this white album. No, not that one. <laughs> Barbara Streisand Live at the Forum. Recorded in 1972, it was, you know, it was awesome. I mean, she was funny, she was naughty, uh, and, and her voice was incredible. I know the lyrics to every song on that album. <laughs> in fact, it's really my official start of my love affair. Now, a few years later, I met my wife-to-be. By luck or destiny, she too is a huge Barbara fan. And she's also a movie freak, and she introduced me to my all-time favorite movie, What's Up, Doc? If you haven't seen it, you must. It's a screwball comedy written by Buck Henry, starring Barbara and a young, studly Ryan O'Neill. That's, that's my wife's words. And it's, <laughs> it's, set, it's set in San Francisco, and a particularly romantic scene takes place in a restaurant under construction high atop a hotel. Now, my wife and I went to San Francisco on a trip in 1985, and we had dinner at Henri's at the top. And we felt like we'd been there before, and sure enough, it was the exact same restaurant where Ryan and Barbara had filmed that scene. We were mere feet from the spot. Awesome. But <laughs> wait, there's more. There's more. My, my, my wife's sister worked for Bette Midler for a year as a personal assistant. Now, it was during this time that Barbara hosted a, um, a $5,000 seat concert for charity on her Malibu ranch for 500 Hollywood dignitaries. Bet was invited, and the invitation arrived in a decorative autographed tin. Inside the tin was a cassette tape with Barbara's personal invitation. My sister-in-law asked Bet for the tin, and she in turn gave it to me. Awesome. So, <laughs> now, if I, have to list, if I had to list the high points of my life, number one would be the birth of our son. It simply can't be topped. Number two, Yankee Stadium, 1998, being there for game one of the World Series when Tony Gwynn went yard. I thought I was going to faint. <laughs> so, and, in fact, our son's middle name is Anthony in honor of Tony. Now, number three would be seeing Barbara live in Vegas. Just edging out my wedding day at number four. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she knew that, right, honey? Right? Okay. <laughs> we never thought we'd get a chance to see her live, and then the impossible happened. Barbara, never a fan of performing in front of people, decided to do two comeback concerts in Las Vegas, New Year's 1994. We battled the phone lines for hours. We actually obtained four cheap seats at $500 each. <laughs> That's true, true story. <laughs> it was a magical night. I mean, even in her early 50s, Barbara astounded us with her incredible voice. In fact, you know, as we left the theater that night, we looked at each other and smiled just knowing we had shared a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Not true, not true. Barbara did 10 shows in Anaheim that summer. We caught two more. It's awesome. <laughs> so let me leave you with this. Go see, get, you know, give Yentl a chance. It's, it's her labor of love. Thank you. Go see What's Up, Doc. It's very funny. And, and, and also, listen to Starting Here, Starting Now. And marvel as the piano climbs the scale to hit a note that Barbara holds for what seems an eternity. Maybe you won't think I'm the goofball you thought I was five minutes ago. Thank you and good night. Yeah.